Dr. Eric Yazel with the Clark County, Indiana Health Department has been one of the most sought after doctors, experts in our community, that's for sure, since March when the COVID pandemic first hit our area. He's joining us again. Dr. Yazel, we have checked in with you throughout the past six plus months and things have definitely changed. But over here in Indiana, we're open for business. So how how are we doing? Where do you feel we are? Yeah, I think thank you for having me. I, I think uh, we've made some progress. I think our numbers have improved over the last uh, oh four to six weeks and plateaued off and started a gentle decline again. And I think that's why you saw Indiana move forward into stage five. I do think you have to add the caveats that still includes mask wearing, social distancing, and things like that. So. The original stage five, stage five was kind of a, we're fully open, but there are some qualifiers to that on, on the current stage five, and we want to make sure we're clear on that. So. Definitely. Now, are you finding our people wearing masks? I mean, because if you, if you want to jump on Twitter, I can tell you what Twitter will say about Indiana or Facebook or, or what have you, but I mean, you're a doctor over here. You're seeing the data. You're seeing the people are people are the numbers showing that people are actually wearing the masks and that they're they're working so we've seen a little bit of kind of waxing and waning with that you know when the the indiana state mask mandate went into place compliance was really high and then it just kind of has gradually declined a little bit too and that is a concern of ours especially you know as the weather's cooling off and more events are moving indoors and things you're starting to get some you know you're gonna start getting some early halloween gatherings and things like that and we just want to reiterate to, to be very cautious. Uh, some of these things are exactly how the, the upswing in cases in July happened. So, you know, let's make sure that we're making good decisions and still uh, treating everything with a, a great deal of respect because of the potential it has. Can you take out your crystal ball and, and tell us, I mean, are, are we ever going to be in a place where we don't have to wear masks again? Do you see that? I do. I do think it's probably a ways off. You know, I think it's a combination of things you're going to see, you know, as it works its way through the community, more and more people will be affected by it and will be you know, technically immune. Um, you're going to see a vaccine you know, on the horizon and some other things. And so I think eventually we'll get to that level. But I do think it's going to be a, be a slow process and obviously a frustrating process for a lot of people. But it, you know, it is what it is. And hang in there because we're all, I mean, it, this is this is all of us together and our actions, they definitely affect other people. So let's talk about that. We've heard a lot of talk about vaccinations. We've heard a lot of talk about when we're going to see them. What what are your thoughts on that? Is there one coming soon? You know, we've actually already had some discussions on, you know, when a vaccine is available, the logistics of you know, what populations will be the first priority, how we go about that, things like that. Um, nothing concrete yet. I think that's still down the pipeline. And, you know, I do think uh, there's been kind of a, hey, let's slow down, make some make some good common sense decisions, take a really close look at the, and, you know, scrutinize the safety of any new vaccine that's coming our way. Um, you know, I know, I think all the verbiage up until now has been, hey, let's, you know, let's get this through as soon as we can. And, I think over the last few weeks, there's kind of been a change in that mind frame of, hey, you know, we, we need to re-engage the public and get the public trust back and things like that. And the onus is on us to, you know, to make sure that we're putting a safe product out there. Is I mean, I, that is something that you hear a lot of people talk about because rushing through a vaccine and then asking people to take it, I mean, they they have to trust that. But speaking of vaccines, how important is it that people get their flu vaccine? Yeah, that's actually one of our main focuses right now is if there's ever been a season where it's just absolutely essential to get your flu vaccine, it's right now. As we all know, the symptoms of the flu very closely mimic the symptoms of COVID-19. And so the more that you can protect yourself from any of that gray area, it's better for everybody. The flu shot's always important, but this year it's even more so. I have to say, I already got mine and uh, my daughter got hers. My husband is is next. It was super quick and easy and safe. And I'm very appreciative um, to the individuals who allowed us to, to do that. And I mean, I take that very seriously. I grew up, my mom's a nurse. So those protecting myself also means that I'm protecting other people. But 
speaking of that, you mentioned Halloween as well. You've been very kind enough to be candid about the decisions, Dr. Yazel, that you have made for for your kids and that you wouldn't ask the public to do things for their children that you wouldn't do as well. So what are your thoughts about Halloween? Yeah, the, I think, you know, my main focus Halloween wise is avoiding the large indoor parties and things like that. That's, you know, that's your highest risk area when you've got a lot of people in an enclosed space, you know, playing games and things like that. That's a, uh, you know, that's a really high risk activity um, as far as I'm concerned. As far as other things, um, you know, it's more of a know your own risk profile. If you're a high risk individual, you know, then probably need to be much more cautious. If, you know, otherwise, then I think make good decisions. You know, the, one of the big questions we get is door to door trick or treating. The CDC has classified that as a higher risk activity. But I think if you're going to partake in that, then I think, you know, there are some things you can do to protect yourself. You know, make sure masks are always a, a good thing on Halloween. Make sure you're masked up. Uh, you know, limit your exposure from house to house and things like that. So there's a lot of things you can do individually. And that's one of the big things with stage five in Indiana is it puts a lot of personal responsibility on people to know their own risk uh, factors and make uh, make good decisions. It definitely does. Now, Harvest Homecoming, of course, has been canceled for this year, which just means they're going to bring it back in 2021, bigger and better, we're hopeful for. There are a few different places that are going to be serving up food, but they're doing it in such a way that they're at individual places and taking the same precautions that you are asking restaurants. So like you said, I mean, one of the most important things that people can do is to assess your own risk. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you're an older person or even if you're a younger you know, child or a younger person who has no problems, it's not just you, it's who you're interacting with. So especially if you've just partaken in an activity that's a little higher risk, then obviously maybe, you know, take a couple of weeks and don't go around your, you know, grandparents or somebody else that may, you know, may have other medical problems. And so, yeah, it just puts a lot of individual responsibility and yeah, know your own health problems and, and make your decisions accordingly. Now, when it comes to our, I mean, it's just very difficult. Our community here with Great Day Live, I mean, we're Kentucky and Indiana. Indiana is vastly different in terms of how things have been done and, and the speed and the reopening and even, even the numbers. And you look at Indiana and, I mean, just the other day, uh, Governor Bashir was talking about, I mean, we're seeing another incline and it's, it's disconcerting and very concerning. How? How is that happening? I mean, it's a river that separates us. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It's, it, it's difficult for us from a uh, public health standpoint, too, because, you know, we try to stay in, li in line with the Indiana guidelines as much as we can. But a lot of Clark County functions as a suburb of Louisville. And so when the you know regulations are different, it does pose a challenge. I just think uh, the fact that the numbers have been different, even though Indiana has been maybe a little more aggressive, Kentucky more you know conservative in that the, in that aspect. Um, there's a, it just underscores how many factors go into to spread of COVID-19. You know, there's geographic factors, social economic factors, just things across the board that make every community its own kind of individual, uh, unique uh, experience that way. And, and that's what we're seeing. And so that makes it a challenge because you can't really do a one size fits all. This is the policy for everywhere. And, and you know, that's just not a, a realistic way to do things. Just a couple more questions. When it comes to, I mean, you're seeing people able to move out and about far more. Um, a lot of a lot of students are back in person if that's what you know has been chosen. And are you seeing a mental health? I guess I don't want to say an increase, but I mean, are, is mental health more positive? Are people struggling as much? Has it changed at all? Because you're also, I mean, the news reports about opioid abuse and depression. I mean, we're still seeing some of that. Where do you see in general mental health is for, especially Hoosiers? Yeah, that's been one of the toughest things of COVID-19, I think. Uh, you know, all our indices of mental illness, substance abuse, things like that have, you know, are up 30, 40 percent. And that's really been a challenge. And I do think as we gradually open up, um, that's going to help things. Now, I do think we're not going to see the effects of that immediately. You know, we're not going to open up and then all of a sudden all our problems go away. But I do think as you can, you know, increase your treatment modalities and, and things along those lines, you're going to see a gradual improvement of those numbers. But it's going to take a while. And that's a real challenge. And, 
you know, that's one thing when we do open up, our first priority is to get those kind of essential services back to our community. But also we can't overshoot the mark because if we're too aggressive, then, you know, we'll have a resurgence and have to scale back. And then, you know, we've done done no good in the long run. I'm just shaking my head over here, just going, you know, because everybody knows what what that feels like. Okay, last question for you. One piece of advice that you would give to anyone who's out there right now who, I mean, maybe is still struggling with everything that's happened. Yeah, I think, you know, honestly, some of those same themes that we've been talking about since March. Number one, it's just a constant barrage of information with, you know, different agendas and different reliabilities and things like that. I encourage everybody to find a couple trusted news sources, you know, and, and limit your exposure, you know, get, you know, get 15, 20 minutes of information in the morning at night, you know, the constant barrage all day long of, of information. It's not good for anybody's mental health. And then just, again, a sense of community, you know, be respectful of different people's ideas and, and thoughts about the pandemic and, you know, look out for your neighbors, look out for, you know, your family members who may be higher risk and, just a great, a bigger sense of community, I think, is is what we need out there right now. And that is definitely great advice. Get outside. That yep. seems, I mean, I, I, you had said that before on one of the many times that we have talked about just the importance of, of doing that and how much better it can make you feel. So limit that time with that bombardment of information and unplug. That's for yep. sure. Dr. Yazel, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for having me.